Hello and welcome. Today we will discuss the graphical representation of statistical data. In the previous video, we have learned how the raw data can be presented in a simple table and in a frequency distribution table. Today we will learn how the data from a frequency distribution table can be represented graphically. So graphical representation is a visual representation of data using graphs, plots and charts. Today we will discuss only these three types of graphical representation, bar graph or bar chart, then pie graph or pie chart and the histogram. The advantages of graphical representation are that it quickly illustrates the general behaviors of the data and it highlights the phenomenon of the data and it gives greater insight into the trend of the data or nature of the data. So graphical representation is the use of charts and graphs to visually display, analyze, clarify and interpret numerical data. Let us discuss about the bar chart or the bar graph. So these are some bar, these are actually the rectangular bar. So it has some height and width. The width of the rectangular bar represents nothing and there should be equal space between these rectangular bars and the height of the rectangular bar represents the frequency of the data. Suppose these are the weights of three students, say this is 50 kg and this is 60 kg and this is 70 kg. So from this graph we can quickly get the idea of the weight of the students. So bar chart displays data using rectangular bar of different heights and the height depends on the frequency of the data. This is the simplest and most widely used graphical representation of the numerical data. Now let us take one example taken in the previous video. These are the scores of Virat Kohli in the last 10 T20 innings. So these scores 11, 1, 7, 25, 73, etc. can be represented graphically like this. And you can use a graph paper for this and this can also be plotted in a simple white paper. And here you see this number 11 is the score of Virat Kohli in the match 1. And this 73 runs was scored in the match number 5 and 58 was scored in match number 9. And this way all the scores of the 10 innings are represented graphically by this rectangular bars and you remember the width of the rectangular bar represents nothing but the height of the rectangular bar represents the frequency and in this case the frequency is the score of the inning and the space between the rectangular bars should be equal. Let us take another examples the marks obtained by the 50 students in a class test. So this is a group frequency distribution table. We have discussed in the previous video what is group frequency distribution. And this class interval, the marks between 40 and 50, there are eight students. And in this interval of marks from 50 to 60, there are 15 students. And in the interval 60 to 7, there are 13 students and so on and total number of students is 50 and we can plot this group frequency distribution table in a bar chart like this and in this case also you can plot it in a simple white paper or in a graph paper so this height you can see this is 8 so this 8 is the frequency in the class interval 40 to 50 and this 15 is the frequency in the class interval 50 to 60. So the height represents the frequency of the data and here also you can see the space between the 
rectangular bars are kept same and the width represents nothing. So this is group frequency distribution. For this we need the group frequency distribution table. There is another type of bar graph that is the double bar graph. In this case two bars, rectangular bars are drawn side by side for two categories. In the previous case it was for one category say the score of Virat Kohli if it is compared with another player then it will be two categories so here the mode of transport used by boys and girls for going to the same school and this table will be used so 80 numbers of boys use bus service and 90 numbers of girls use bus service and for bicycle the numbers are 60 and 75 respectively and for walking 20 and 35 and so on so there are two categories category one is boys and category two is girls so this can be plotted like this so this color represents boys and this is given represented like this this color represents the boys and this color represents the girls so you can see for boys 18 numbers of boys use bus service and for the bus service again 90 numbers of girls are using the bus service and for the bicycle 60 boys use the bi uh, bicycle and 75 girls use the bicycle so this is compared between two categories boys and girls and same is the case for walking and other source of transport so this is called double bar curve it may also be triple if the number of categories are three then it will be a triple bar curve also now coming to pie graph or pie chart so this is related to one circle and one circle has 360 degree angle total angle that is one complete revolutions a pie chart is a circular statistical graphic which divide into slices to illustrate numerical proportions here you can see this is one slice this is another slice this is another slice and each slice has some particular angle and that angle depends on the frequency of the data so a circle is divided into slices and each slice represents the count or percentage of the observation or we can say the frequency of the observation the total angle of a circle is divided proportionate to its frequency or its observation so let us understand with the help of one example suppose a student Monoz appeared for ICSC examination in 2018 and he secured percentage of marks as shown in the following table he got 60 marks in Hindi 45 in English 42 in maths 48 in science and 75 in social science percentage of marks and the total marks is 270 sum of all marks so this 270 is equivalent to the one circle that is equal to 360 degree so 75 out of 270 that we have to convert to some angle proportionate to the marks obtained now we have to prepare a table that we will call the pie graph table so here you can see the total mark is 270 and the individual marks are 60 45 42 48 and 75 and 60 out of 270 multiplied by 360 degree the equivalent angle or proportionate angle is 80 degree here and for 45 the proportionate angle is 60 degree 
and this way we get the individual proportionate angles and the total angle will be equal to 360 degree. Now you have to draw a circle then distribute the 360 degree into 80, 60, 56, 46 and 100 degree and this can be done like this. So this 75 marks angle is 100 degree so this angle should be equal to 100 degree and this 60 marks that is equal to 80 degree so this angle is 80 degree again 48 this angle is 64 degree and 42 this mark is equal to 56 degree and 45 marks this is equal to 60 degree so for each slice we can use different color or and for social science the color is this one and this way based on the proportionate angles we can complete one pie graph or pie chart now let us discuss the histogram it is a bar chart only that plots the frequency distribution as a series of bars that means successive bars there is no space between two rectangular bars and that type of bar chart is called a histogram so we take one example draw a histogram for the following table say this is a the frequency is 234 b frequency is 400 and for C frequency is 350 and so on so the histogram is like this here you can see in this case also the height of the rectangular bar represents the frequency this 400 is for B so this height represents the frequency for B and there is no gap between these two successive rectangular bar so that is the only difference between the bar graph and the histogram this is a continuous one with no space between two rectangles so that's all for today thank you